Alright, so we're waiting for one more player for the M13 draft for Switch. Usually getting the 8th player doesn't take this long. Hopefully my voice is not too annoying to listen to. First pack. Let's see what we've got. Sarah Avenger, don't like her. Crusader's good. Kite Sail's okay. Acidic Slime, Tended Knight. Looks like the best here is going to be Even Squire by quite a lot. Swings for two on turn three in the air. Hopefully put us into white. Harbor Bandit, Giant Scorpion, Garbage. Decent, but heavy white requirement. There's not even many of these in the set. Welcome can turn and Windrake are good in blue. Hmm, this is a tough pack. Giant Scorpion is strong on the ground. I think I'm going to try Welk and turn. It's going to be hard to. Well, I could get the Sun Striker. I don't think the Sun Striker. Battle of Wits, Force Mage, Turn to Slag, Attended Knight, Junk, Giant Scorpion again. It's going to be between the Attended Knight and the Giant Scorpion. Both three drops. I'm going to take the Attended Knight if I have Exalted at Beast the Scorpion. Primal Play is versatile. I didn't like it very much, but I tried it recently. And it wasn't too bad. 2-2 two, two Eagle for 5. I do not like I'm gonna get the War Priest. You can take. There's a lot of annoying enchantments in the format. You can take out. Healer of the Pride is good. Captain's Call is good. Dark Favor is actually good. You put it on something with evasion and it just kicks ass. I'm gonna get the Healer though and hope to try to get the Captain's Call on the way around. Pray no one takes it. They probably will. Don't like the white I'm seeing. Pillar Field Ox is bad. Guardian Lines is too expensive. I'm going to pick the Ravenous Rats. I want to have a low mana curve in this deck if at all possible. Black can also be a second color. I may splash if I'm seeing it heavily from more exalted creatures for some removal. If I'm not lucky. And a Johnny Sunstriker gets a lot better if I have a lot of exalted or if um or if I'm playing heavy white. Obviously the double white casting cost won't be as bad then. Okay, Volcanic Strength is underrated. The Mountain Walk will beat half your opponents straight out. Some people like the Entrancer. Divine Favor is a lot better than it looks, but this is a pretty late Guardians of Akrosa. He's an awesome wall and more exalted. Silver Coat Lion, Ravenous Rats, Goblin Arsonist is good, Fairy Invaders is playable, Arena Blades is a decent combat trick, but I think I'm going to go with another Ravenous Rats. If I'm going to splash black, he's a good chump blocker and adds up to some card advantage, possibly, because I'm just not hot on a 
on a grizzly bear is for white when you can get so much better for the same cost. Okay, some interesting choices here. Signing blood is good to get you going. It can be a finisher if you get the opponent low. Another attended knight. It's great with tokens. Synergy with healer of the pride. I'm getting two creatures in, so I gain four life if it's if, it, if it's in play. Kite sail can give any of my guys another attack and give it flying evasion, which is nice. With exalted, but I think I'm gonna take the attended knight in this case. First strike is good with uh, exalted as well. Nothing too much here for me. Uh, I don't really like the glorious charge for trick. I guess if my deck is bad enough. I could theor theoretically end up playing it. When they want to trade, I'll get a card out of it, but I'll lose a card. Okay, let's take wind drake. So if I don't want to see that. I think I'm going to take the Windrake. Who knows, maybe I'll end up uh, splashing blue if I see a ton of blue cards come around. Mostly junk here. I guess we'll take the Mastiff. And pack two. Magic crashed for me during the draft. That's never happened before. Hopefully it never happens again. I think I was able to grab a pacifism out of it. Which is practically miraculous to be able to log back in and grab that. Craziness. Very bad craziness. Okay, duty bound dead. If I'm going black as my second color, this is almost exactly what I want to see. Turn one exalted. It can block elvish visionaries or anything else. Tormented soul. I would take these guys all day. The they would just win games all on their own. See if I can get a black or white ring during this draft. That'll really get me rocking. I did a real life draft recently with uh, four of Tormented Soul and I just dominated the whole time. Guardians of Krosa are dark favor at this point. It's basically the choice. Uh, I, may see the, I may see both come back around again. Flint and Hoof Boar would be bad to go up against but I am going to take the dark favor uh, on a, an exalted guy it can end games very quickly. And I do have a couple Guardians of Crossa already. Not that you can really have too many of them, but just in case I don't get another chance at one, I do like to have a couple buffing enchantments. It can lead to possible card disadvantage with a murder or a divine verdict, but that's the risk you take, or the pacifism for the chance to beat down. And even if you only can attack with it once it's still not the worst thing out there okay rocks faith mender this is crazy and it's foil sign in blood is what i might take otherwise but really i'd take the crippling blight can straight up kill creatures and also remove them as a blocker but the faith mender do i already have some lifelink uh i do with healer of the pride and a johnny sun striker if i can get a mark of the vampire Four mana for a one five. I'm gonna have to take it. it. Could be a potential bomb if I get things to match it. Prize elephant is amazing if I was running a forest. I don't really want to run one forest just to have that. So it's gonna be crippling blight. Uh, crippling blight is I'm a little low on removal at this point. Not a lot in here. Ring of Volcus is amazing if you're playing red. I don't like this vampire. Not really deck we're on to sacrifice my guys. Uh, or many situations where that would help me. I mean, I guess potentially if I had tokens and was flying in for the finish. Something. But no. 
I think I'm gonna take the blade tusk boars. I don't have about no ways, no ways to stop it, really. Not a whole lot on this pack for me. Red might be getting underpicked. I could take the war clamp master, but I don't. I don't like him that much. Although I may have enough exalted to make him decent, but I still have a feeling I won't end up playing him. Veilborn ghoul, I just don't like at all. I guess he could potentially see play, but I'll be sad if he does. Titanic growth is a gross combat trick. I, I hate seeing that. Uh, duress could potentially take it out, but I like to run as many creatures as possible. I'm going to take this out so I don't have to go up against it. Ditto the dragon hatchling. He's underrated. Fog is garbage. I should be winning enough so that fog doesn't matter. A race for the sideboard in case they have a rancor. Don't want mark of mutiny messing me up. And pack three. Right, so we're shaping up okay right now. Kind of forcing the colors, but I am getting enough coming around to that I'm able to work with it. All right, let's see. Oh Jesus, the Johnny Color of the Pride. <laughs> oh. That's just perfect in this deck. Three mana, if we see this, it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be GG. We do have Duskman Del Prowler, who I would play. Jame Day Tome is probably playable in this deck. Ravenous Rats is, you know, never, not the best. We have two already. Evolving Wilds is good, but pff, Johnny all day long. Yeah, Elixir of Immortality, combos with that Rhino. I know, 10 life off of it, but it's not important. I can't believe that. That's great mythic. Drop him for three. He's got four loyalty. You put a plus one, plus one counter. Can give a creature flying and double strike right away and straight win the game. His eight cost if I was able to defend him. I put a million two two white cat tokens based on my life total. I have life gain. Let's see, faith's reward, return all, battlefield permanence, my graveyard that died this turn. Knight of Glory is going to be what I'm going to pick. I know that almost for sure. Sleep is not as powerful as it may look. I wouldn't mind getting a sign in blood this game. I really wouldn't. It's probably not going to come back around again. But Knight of Glory is just too good against black. It's just amazing. You can't be murdered. Now, okay, public execution. I'm low on direct creature kills. And this can just, if they attack with a bunch, it can just destroy them all out. Ring of Thune is what I'm going to end up picking. These are underrated. It totally defeats stalls. I can get something in the air and attack every turn and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Spread the tokens out, do a lot of tricks with that. Griffin Protector is better than the other Griffin. Uh, that's five, or the Eagle rather. Dark Favor, I like a couple of these in my deck, but the Ring of Thune is much is much more powerful because it stays if the creature dies. Captain's Call, again, I would like to have this in the deck. It's f certainly playable. Good combo with Healer of the Pride, but the Ring of Thune just takes priority here. Wow, and we've got the Big Wrath of God. Destroy all non-land permanents. Guardian Lions. Switcheroo can be extremely annoying. Volcanic Strength, I don't have to worry about because I don't have mountains. If I was playing red, I'd almost certainly pick it. Divine Verdict is wonderful removal for white. Which I may need. Liliana's Shade is not that good at all. Tormented Soul, underrated. Gonna be picking it with all my, all my creatures that have uh, Exalted. This is just amazing, and I definitely want to have two. I would, I would play three. Okay, and here we go. This is wonderful. I would almost play Ring of Evil's Isle. I'd consider it if it was a bad pack. Hexproof is awesome. Stop any removal if I keep two mana open. Encrust is good. I hopefully they won't put that on something of mine. 
Duty Bound Dead is amazing. Amazing. I definitely would like to play another one of these, but I really want a Mark of the Vampire. Put that on something with Exalted or something that flies or something unblockable. It turns the game around. I can't miss a chance to get it. And Jesus, wow, another dude, Mar another duty bound dead, and another Mark of the Vampire. This is just crazy. Most games I'll want to get Mark of the Vampire. I have a duty bound dead already. But another one is good too. This is one of those choices that's difficult. Will I have room to run these when I need to run mostly creatures and I only have limited spell slots? And it costs four. I won't always reliably getting, be getting to four mana. I've got, I want to take the mark, but I think I'm gonna have to take the duty bound dead to lower my lower my mana cost and have faster early games. Dark Favor could almost take the place of it. It doesn't have the life gain. It's cheaper, and it goes wonderfully on the tormented souls and pretty much any exalted creature. Show of Valor is not that good. Guardian Lions, 1 6 for 5. I'm playing a very aggro deck. I don't really want to get to 5 mana reliably. I want to get to 3 mana about on turn 3, like 90% of the time. 4 mana on turn 4, like 60 to 70% of the time. 5 mana on turn 5, like 50% of the time. So it's going to be Dark Favor. Dark Favor's opposite. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus three, gain three life, combos with my life gain, Rhino. Touch of the Eternal, count your uh, permanence, your life total becomes that, it costs seven, the sec doesn't want to get seven. Do I want a third Guardians of Krosa? The answer is probably yes, if I have something to go with it, it stalls the ground against green and a lot of stuff. Just helps me out. Another ravenous rats. Do I want to be running three of these? I probably won't be running three regardless. But not a lot of stuff for us, and not a lot of stuff that would help our enemies that much. Some people would say, should I have an elixir of immortality? Uh, probably not. Even with the combo with our four cost guy here. Where is he? The Rock's Faith Mender, you gain twice that life. 10 mana is quite a swing. You know what? I'll try that. I don't usually take it. I probably should have taken the Ravenous Rats, but I still don't even know if those would make the deck. So, I've, you know, it, it's pretty bad, but there's some milling strategies out there. It's uh, kind of interesting. Distant Tomb. Uh, has potential, I guess. Yes, Captain's Call coming around a second time. That with Rock's Faith Mender and Healer of the Pride out. Gain 2, 4, 6, 12 life. And that would be a funny uh, situation. Guardian Lions or take Volcanic Strength or take Smelt. Gonna take the Lions, I guess. Divine Valor a second time around. Not the worst thing to see. Alright. And uh, our deck is um, not bad. I'm, I'm not feeling bad about it at all. Really. I've got the, uh, the kind of cards that I want to see in a draft like this. I don't feel that we really got shut off or hate drafted at all. More than what, um, more than what I would need to be successful. Two tormented souls and uh, two duty bound dead is an amazing start. That means I can drop either one of these on turn one and be in a good position for turn two. Duty bound dead is a zero two. It regenerates. For later in the game, if I have mana, it can block big things. If I have the mana, as a zero two, it can block elvish visionaries and other small things. They might may try to sneak early damage in with. Gonna play a Johnny. We know that. Gonna play a Mark of the Vampire. 
Let's see what else we got. Ravenous Rats. We'll have to see. Crippling Blight. Gonna need this. Kill small things. Stop them from blocking. Play at least one Dark Favor. We're gonna play two. Uh, probably we'll have to see. Ring of Thune all day long. We know we're, we know we're gonna play the pacifism. Can't believe I picked that up when I was logging back in from being disconnected with two seconds left. Knight of Glory, beautiful. War Priest of Thune. Should I main deck this? It says I may destroy target enchantment. I don't have to, so it won't uh, screw up the enchantments I have. But main deck, it could stop the opposition. Uh, Slow them down. Attended night. We're gonna we're gonna put these guys in. We're gonna put in the Heal of the Pride and the Rock's Faith Mender. This is usually more four drops than I have, but I don't think I'm gonna use any five drops. So uh, these combo nicely. The Heal of the Pride just goes well with my normal creatures, and if I happen to play an attended night or have this guy out, suddenly it's an amount of life game that is seriously slowing things down for them and starting to cause problems. Avon Squires, beautiful card. It would be playable as a 1-1 one -one player, 1-1 one -one flyer for 2. The Exalted is just icing on the tape, on the cake because then it's going to swing for 2. You can enchant it, you can drop other Exalted on the ground and have him just flying in for so much damage. Guardians of Akrosa. Great card. I'm going to play all three because we want those. Uh, I don't have really three drops in black. And we want those exalted cards coming out. And uh, these guys block, you know, creatures with three attack, which is wonderful. It definitely slows down the opposition while giving us an edge in attacking. Kinda wish I took that kite sail. Don't remember what I took over it. War clamp mastiffs don't often make my run because yes, they're first strike. Yes, they go good with exalted. I could see myself playing one perhaps. But uh I just don't like them that much for some reason. If you don't have an exalted they they don't trade well with you know two twos. I guess they do okay against two ones. But not always what I want to see when I can, you know, see an unblockable 1-1 one, one for 1. Or a 0-2, you know, with Exalted. I'm already at 23 cards. So, you know, adding 17 land, I would be done at this point. But the Divine Favor turns things into awesome blockers. Do I risk losing card advantage if it dies? Yes. It's a risk. Not many people run enchantment removal though. Obviously a creature removal card will do just as well. So it's kind of iffy, but if they don't get it, they don't get it. Or they have to use it on a bigger threat or a different one. So it's uh, coming off the top of the deck, it's usually not that bad to see. Ravenous Rats. If I play a bunch of these... That's going to be pretty punishing for the opponent. It's going to be, you know, trading cards at worst. And I'll be trading something for something they don't want to give up almost always. Duress, I'm not going to play. It doesn't affect the board. I'm down a card. There's no guarantee that they have a non-creature card in their hand. It's too dicey for me. Too risky. Zombie Goliath is bad. Race is not going to be main deck. Dark Favor is going to be more aggro, more potential. Now we've got 26, we're going to have to trim the fat a little bit. Let's see what our status is for how much black versus white. We probably want to have about equal. Alright, our white is a little heavy. Kind of to be expected, our mana curve, average cost 2.31. I like this, we can win with Mana Shrew. If we have opening hand of one Swamp and one Plains, we can win the game. Drawing no more land. I've done it before, and the potential to do that is amazing. 
not always what you want to happen, but it has happened in my favor. So what am I going to remove? Two drops are the heaviest. Johnny Sunstreaker costs double white. That could be bad. Early game, I don't get two white. The lifelink is nice. The lifelink is great with exalted creatures. How much do I want to risk that? It's uh, payoff versus its weaknesses. Do I want to run both the ravenous rats? Probably not. If I get them both in my hand at once, it's bad. I don't mind seeing them out as a chump. But I don't really want to get two of them. Almost any of the other two ofs and multiples. If I get two of them, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, evasion is great. Evasion wins. And Tormented Souls are doing some heavy lifting for evasion. Uh, even Square has a potential for evasion. Should I maybe have gotten more more flyers? Probably. Probably. I should have maybe picked up a Blood Bat from Black or uh, that uh, Griffin from White. The 2 3 flyer for 4 who gets 1 1 when a creature comes into play. Those have potential. A white one drop. It's not bad. It would have been okay to pick up a murder. At least I have a pacifism. Let's see your stats again. Six nine six four. It actually looks pretty appropriate for what kind of options I want to have. Sixty percent white. And we could go a little land light, we, you know, with the, such a low mana curve, we could potentially be okay. Let's see, nine six, mm, land swamps. This is one of the rare cases where I might want to go over forty, and I don't recommend this for most people. But if there is milling, it can save your save your ass and. Uh, Let's see what our chances are in right now with this. Probabilities of drawing. One land on turn one. Two lands on turn two. Three. Three lands on turn three, 80%. That's good. We want to almost always have three lands on turn three. And three lands by turn four is 86%. And that's all the cards on our deck except for four that we'd be able to cast. Now, the four lands on turn four is a little lower. Four lands on turn five, the chances of drawing that after some draws, 73% chance, that's a high enough margin for me, really. Let's see what happens if we take that swamp away and go back down to 40. Then our chances of uh, four land by turn four actually plummet compared to adding an extra swamp. And that's what we're gonna run with. 17 lands, 16 creatures. And here we go. The one swamp draw on the draw. Do we dare take it? What does the survey say? We're doing mulligan. And the Sun Striker, we have to draw two planes before we can play it. Not the best. I hate mulliganing. I don't like the card disadvantage. I almost never do. I like to take my chances. I don't have any two drops, and two drops are our primary source. I'm gonna take the chance. Let's see. Let's fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
The theory was we'd have two chances to draw before it was turn two. And then hopefully we get something good by then. Where's the sound effects? Effects volume. I don't know if it's gonna be too loud on the uh, on the play or not. Wow. Okay. Master of the Pearl Trident. Hopefully he has not tons of other merfolk, and after cracking that in turn one, at least I do not have islands for the island walk. And no land. We have a couple two drops, so if we draw land, we can play it. Now statistically, half of our remaining cards are land. We have 16 lands left. We played 17. Fog Brank doesn't really stop our tormented soul. If we can get, you know, some Guardians of Kros or something else out there to block. Okay, fucking wonderful. This is what we want to see. As long as he doesn't removal. Well, let's play this first. Give our little torment soul some exalted. Start racing him. That's why I love tormented soul. Without a removal card, fast. I would hate to see an encrust or a pacifism right now. That would really slow me down. I don't want to trade with him. Besides the fact he could have a combat trick to save his guy. That doesn't matter as much as the fact I need my Knight of Glory up and doing things. Okay, and now we are looking better. Because we can cast it. I got cast a Tended Knight. Start being more aggro. Count on first strike to kill his guy or stop him from attacking. But I'm going to play Guardians of Krosa. For more exalted on my Tormented Soul. Am I going to attack right into Divine Verdict? Uh, he kept... Four mana open, it's possible. That's the risk I'm gonna have to take. He could just be bluffing. Or he could have one. And he took it. So, you can't always be intimidated by what they could have. He could very well have a combat trick to stop my guardians, and I'm going to take a bet that he doesn't. Show Valor. Alright, he's got 4-6, I've got nothing to stop it. It really doesn't concern me a great deal though, honestly. I'm gonna keep the, you know, I, I should have maybe used the crippling blight on that guy earlier, but I am gonna use the uh, dark favor, of my tormented soul. If he doesn't counter it or bounce it or do some other trick, looks like he's going for tricksy things, as blue white often does. Play the Sun Striker. He's down to nine. This is why the Tormented Soul, as a famous person once said, 
there are no wrong threats, there are only wrong answers, and he concedes with two turns left to live. Who knows what he could have top decked to win. I don't think I have anything really to side in. I don't, uh... I'm not really concerned about what much I saw in his deck yet. I guess, uh, you know, a trick of my own, like Divine Favor, could be halfway decent, but I'm just going to go with what I got. He's going to be playing first again. Alright, I've got all my mana this time. A slower, a slower hand. Not going to mulligan. Okay, if he's going to be really aggro, that'll be kind of annoying. My, my hand is a little slower. I hopefully will be able to stem the bleeding though with the Guardians of Akrosa. At least he doesn't have Master of the Pearl Trident on turn two. That would be scary. And at least I don't have islands for him to island walk. Putting a Thune. Hopefully not met with a Negate or a uh, Anything like that. And it's good. Of course, it doesn't do much on my guardians except making them bigger. Less susceptible to combat tricks that buff his guys. And that's bad. That's an amazing creature. You pay one and gain three life when it attacks. I'm going to have to really race. It's going to be tough to race him with that. I'm gonna need a uh, flyer or pacifism or wow, um, that's that's always good too. Goodness, of course you can fly over and attack my guy. That's that's kind of sucky. And there's not really uh, much I could use him for at this point. So I'm gonna have to play my blocker. And it looks like he can be a little... Okay, no, he's got enough mana. Three mana for a 3-2. As long as you control planes. And he gains lifelink until end of turn if he pays a white mana. Yeah. What? Why? What? That makes no sense. I'm gonna ask him why. Why did you just con concede your Avon could have raced me and gained life? A life gain would have wrecked me. I'm sure I had Johnny, but didn't have creatures out really. I would have played two guardians with the Ring of Thune. They can't attack. They get bigger, but they can't block his fire. I had nothing to attack with my hand, just another Guardian's Land and a Johnny. I mean, I could have played a Johnny, and still with no attackers, uh, he'd be able to fly over and hit it with the Avon. I wouldn't be able to protect it. There's no way I would have been able to get to the 8 ability. And it looks like he has no intention of answering me. So, we're the only ones who are done, and I'll see you next round. 
All right, and here we go with the next round. Do I want to mulligan? Hell no. Looking appropriate. Looking very appropriate. This is what I want to see, more or less. Johnny, which will need a second planes. Faith Mender can block, get me some life. And Tormented Soul. I think this guy's playing black green. And another guy was playing black green as well. And another guy was playing uh, black, blue, red. And he had Flames of the Firebrand. And, um. Some. Uh, he had a Vampire Nighthawk, which I wish I would have gotten. That's like. Uh, I consider that to be the best creature in the set, honestly. I won an entire tournament just by having two Vampire Nighthawks that I opened. I don't think there's much at all. Maybe one or two cards that I'd pick higher than that. And we wait for this gentleman to go. I will whisper him. Maybe that will get his attention. Nice card. <laughs> I love when my opponent's mulligan on the play. Being up two cards is really amazing. You can win games all on its own. I just hate having the mulligan. So Tormented Soul, um, I really wish I would have gotten a Ring of Zarthid, because that combination can just win stalls straight up. Ring of Zarthid actually protects the creature it's on as well. I would take it in any color. At this point, I would take it even if I wasn't playing black. Two mana to play, and then two mana to regenerate. You keep those two mana open, and... You know, murder allows creatures to regenerate. Damage allows creatures to regenerate. Um, I think most of the Wrath of God variants they've made now allow uh, regeneration. Okay, my turn. Tormented Soul. Waiting for him. Where'd my sound effects go? Don't mind a little sound. got a slow player here. I have flat out won against players who were too slow. Even if they were beating me, at the end they run out of time, they take too long, they're doing other things while they play, and they lose. Alright, he's got an aggressive one drop as well. Fortunately I'm not looking as good on one drops. Uh, well, rather nothing to play on my two drop, and I draw another land, which is not what I wanted to see. I would have rather seen a planes if it was another land. That's why I dropped planes in case I, in case I could get a Johnny out. An early a Johnny would be amazing. Start putting plus one, plus one counters on my tormented soul. 
be fantastic. And he would, uh, the duty bound dead would not have been able to regenerate, or rather, not able to attack it for more than one damage. Is he passing turn? All right. Wow, this is, uh, got that planes I was looking for. And let's hope he just scoops right here. No? <laughs> now, worst case scenario, uh, he attacks with a duty bound dead and has the primal might or whatever from, uh, green does five damage to my Johnny still got a plus one plus one counter out of it not the worst use of a turn okay servant of Nephrox he's gonna swing for two auto, auto yield to these effects yep and he's smart enough to attack a Johnny But, I could play another Tormented Soul, but no. We've got Rock's Faith Mender. So we have a blocker for a Johnny. And here's my trick. Uh, I'm going to put it on the Faith Mender, spread the love around. It's a little less damage this turn. But what it means is, he, since he's lifelink, anything he blocks or if he attacks... Uh, you know, he has six toughness now, and he'll be doing two damage. I wonder if this will make the guy outright scoop. Because he's sure taking his time. Hell, if I gave uh, the Faith Mender more tokens, give him flying and double strike, that would uh, give me a lot of life. The blue creature with uh, unblockable and hexproof is three mana from the Innistrad block. Yet this guy is one one unblockable for one. Who cares? He can't block. If that drawback makes it <laughs> so he doesn't cost two mana, I'll take it all day. I don't need him to block. I need him to be a clock. Okay, wow. And it's swinging for seven. That was unexpected. I'm not going to be blocking that. That's that's a lot of life to lose. But I'm not going to lose the Faith Mender either at this point. It's not acceptable. Oh, uh, shit. He's attacking a Johnny. Fuck. I should have blocked. That was my mistake. I didn't want Johnny to die. And nothing I could do there. I would have blocked if I had I had I thought of that. That was a crucial error on my part because I'm not I'm not used to playing with. Uh, I'm honestly not used to playing with with planeswalkers, um, and protecting them. I would have been happy to lose the faith mender, and and blocked with him, uh, even though it wouldn't have killed, the uh, servant of Nephorox. It would have done enough to keep a Johnny alive another turn and uh, put another counter or two on the Faith Mender. Well, no, he would have been dead. Put another counter on the Tormented Soul and uh, had a better plan. That was a, a crucial mistake on my part, unfortunately. But, you know, in a way, he did his job anyway. He got a couple counters out. He took damage that would have gone towards me and... Uh, and sent it to himself instead, so now we've got our opponent at 12. And that's going to be a huge problem right there. The, the lifelink is going to be a critical problem. It's 9-5. I don't have 5 to block. 
And that just demonstrates the power of these enchantments. Mark of the Vampire is, is just bonkers. Got three damage to block with. Can't block, can't do it. I'm gonna have to pray for a pacifism on top deck. And and that would take some real card advantage out. He's gonna be back to full life now. I should have blocked with the Faith Mender last turn. I would have had a better chance, I think. I would have been able to put another token on my uh, Tormented Soul, perhaps. Or, uh, or something. Gonna need to draw a Pacifism off the top. 1 in 30 chance. I don't think I have another removal that would, that would do the trick. Maybe I should have gotten that public execution. I have the mana for it. It's a tough situation. Ah, uh, the one card that may, uh, in fact, let me let me do something because now, if I gain life, I gain twice that life. So, with this, I, I may be able to keep up for a while, actually. I won't be doing as much damage as he is, but I will be gaining almost as much life as he is. So now it's going to come down to kind of a top deck war. I hadn't even considered how Old Mark of the Vampire would affect me. Elvish Archdruid, not really a huge effect. I've just got to basically pray that he doesn't have a murder or something because I'm obviously putting all my eggs in one basket with this kind of move. And if he's got a counter for it, then I'm screwed. But if he doesn't, then it's going to be swinging life back and forth still while we try to get top decks. And that makes me nervous. Murder. Yep. Fuck. So I should have saw that coming. Like I said, not a lot I could do about it. You know what? I should have played around the rocks faith mender. I would have had enough to block him and, uh, and kill his attacker. That was another crucial error on my part. I wouldn't have put as many cards on the Tormented Soul. I could have maintained the life and he would have had to make a difficult choice about which one to kill. Now see, I'm still learning. That's, uh, that was just a mistake. And the kind of mistake that could have been avoided. He'll have me next turn. So what were my two errors in this game? I should have played uh, the Divine, or not the Divine. I should have played the Dark Favor on my Rock's Faith Mender, putting it as a 5-7. Uh, uh, he couldn't have survived the damage, so I wouldn't be getting double, but it would have been enough to kill the uh, Servant of Nephrox and maybe even stop him from attacking with it if he had realized that. As he's out of cards in hand, uh, he would just be striking top deck mode as I am. And, and then he, he could have murdered that to stop me from getting double life, but... Now this is a chance where I'm. This is a case where I'm going to sideboard in a race. And what was my other mistake? Oh, I'm not protecting a Johnny. Although that may have screwed me over later.
Alright. I'm out of luck this game. Let's serve immortality. Let's see. Not something I, I need. Although, with the double life, it could have been good. Distant Tomb. Something that could be useful this game. Jeez, Duress might be good this game. A race could be good this game. Ravenous Rats. Divine Favor. I want to try to lower my mana curve this game and, and do more with less, if at all possible. Uh, I need to come out swinging against this guy, I think, and race him. I think that's my, my primary chance. Of course, my deck is already really fast. So what would I cut? Okay, well I could drop a Guardians of Krosa. Drop a Sunstriker. It'd be nice to get the War Priest of Thune against him. You know what? I'm gonna drop a Plains. Drop a War Clan Mastiff. And I'm gonna run that. Lowers my cost a little bit. Four land on turn four. Fifty percent chance it's a coin flip. Yes, I'd like to play first. I've got a bunch of mana. I've got my war priest. This is not the worst thing I've seen. I I, uh, I have more spells versus land now, so getting four at the beginning is great. Is great, really. Do I want to drop my War Priest? That's the question. Doesn't have a wicked thing to get rid of, so you know what? No, I'm gonna wait on it. Crippling Blight. Do I want to use it so we can't do damage to me and can't block? I don't think so yet. I think I need to use it for something that'll either die or that is a big blocker that's stopping me from attacking. I can take the one damage for the right now. Elvish Visionary. Alright, there's a race. So I'm play my attended knight for a strike and a token. This is some good card advantage for me. Since this is really one and a half cards. Come on, drop Rancor. No? Okay. I'm not gonna fuck with that. Unfortunate, but not much I can do there. Okay, now we're now we're talking. We got Ring of Thune. Gonna be putting it on the first striker. He'll start getting bigger, he'll have Vigilance. And he's probably going to get murdered too. I am going to use Crippling Blight to kill his Elvish Visionary. Uh, just because it hit me last turn doesn't mean much. But I have a feeling the less creatures he has the better. Or you know what, maybe I should remove his Duty Bound Dead so they can't block. It's a tough decision right now. Of course, I could keep X. I could keep that open. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my white open for a race, and I'm gonna put this on my attended knight. And uh, I can attack this turn. I block with this, he dies. Block with this, nothing happens. It's time to attack. If I miss this chance to attack, that two damage may come back to haunt me later on in the game that I passed up. 
Have to know when you can attack. Got first strike, he blocks it with a 2 2. Dies. No point in blocking with this and getting it killed on his point of view. And of course, he takes it, he's smart enough to know what to do. I'd love to see Rancor come in next turn so I can erase it before it's uh, my turn. He'll have four mana, maybe he could even play Mark of the Vampire. He's still playing quite slowly. If our previous uh, games had been drawn out longer, he would really have the chance to run off the clock and lose. I think I tried to play as uh, for as long as possible. Although I did concede, which was a mistake in hindsight, as I could have, uh, I could have done that. And he crippling blights on me, so I can't block. Which is not good. And he swings for three. For two. How is it two? Elves get plus one, plus one. Fuck. So I should have killed the visionary when I had a chance. That was an error in judgment as well. That was a mistake. He's definitely on the ball with this uh, turn. He got the ideal draw and has been top decking while well, it looks like. I made a critical error last turn in not crippling Blight, the Elvish Visionary, while I had the chance. If I had remembered from the previous game, I knew he had the Elvish Arch Druid. I saw that. So, the Elvish Visionary wasn't just a chump block for him. It's a way for him to get extra mana and cast huge spells and to... Um, make it a 2-2 and attack with it. So that's part of the reason I'm doing this is to recognize my mistakes as I go along and see how I can improve. So I'm going to need to draw something and make a great play here in order to uh, have any chance of keeping up or doing anything to, uh, to mess with him. So this turn he just gets back to his original size. He hasn't played out his good enchantments. I don't have much in the way of uh, things to stop him. So this leaves me with not a lot of great options. So what I want a crippling blight. Nothing is a great target at this point. I don't think I have a way to do one damage or otherwise kill the Elvish Archdruid. Even pacified, he could still use his ability. It's bad news for me in every way. I'm gonna do the duty of bad and dead because if the game goes on, he's gonna use it to block. Which I just can't have. Looks like I really could have used a Divine Verdict, or uh, splash some Red Burn, or even um, something along the lines of, uh, maybe he'll feel confident now that I've done this. Actually, you know, I can remove Crippling Blight, which is fantastic. I don't... Why didn't I remove it last turn into his attack? Then I could have blocked and uh, killed something. Although, uh, he still would have been small. So, that's great. That gets him back in the game. That gets him my first strike blocker black, uh, back. You know, I'm not doing well at all at paying attention and focusing. Uh, I had Erase in hand. 
and uh, Priest of Thune to remove that enchantment. But I still need this. I want to save the erase. It's a good combat trick. If he plays Rancor, especially, it exiles Rancor from the game. It won't destroy. Uh, you know, put it back in his hand. It can be uh, played again. Exalted for four. This is the time I'm going to chump block at ten. I can't take the damage. Uh, and soon my knight will be large enough before he's murdered to first strike and block. Bloodhunter bat, another threat. Gets him back up. And he'll be flying over to kill me unless I get something unusual. Now that's going to be getting erased. If I, uh. It's going to have to be getting erased. <sighs> this would have been good to draw earlier. Maybe I'll get the, uh. Some kind of creature who will be able to help me. I think the right move is to erase this now and attack. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, he won't be able to defend against this or block it. I am going to really need like a captain's call to uh, get some life bet with the heal over the pride or else I'm in big trouble. He's going to be swinging with that exalted bat. I got nothing to block with. And I draw Swamp. Bad news. Bad news. If I attack with my attendant knight this time, he can block with the Bloodthorn Vampire and sacrifice, let's say, one, two, three creatures and kill my attendant knight who's been growing. So attacking with it this turn is not the best idea. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, sacking three creatures, would he do that at this point? Maybe, you know, there's no reason why not to. He's gonna uh, win next turn. And win this round, which will be a loss for me. Uh, play this guy and gain two life. Six six. Uh, you have to sacrifice one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna attack anyway. If he sacks the creatures, then great. He's not. He's probably planning on winning next turn regardless. Anything from a sign in blood to Pretty much anything would kill me. This is where I should have drawn the kite sail. Oh, okay, and he's going to uh, play back again and bring it back from the dead to beat me. Interesting. It's okay, I still have the chance to win a couple packs. I just have to beat my next opponent or two. I could have potentially won uh, either of those games. I made some critical mistakes. Um, I didn't, I failed to protect my planeswalker and block when I. Uh, didn't pay attention enough to realize that they were obviously attacking my planeswalker. I stacked uh, enchantments on a tormented soul, and I knew he probably had a murder instead of spreading it and buffing the character with lifelink, who also gives double life. 
Um, I do have good combos with him. And... And I will uh, be watching these videos again to analyze my play more and see how I could have done better. Alright, I'll see you in the next round. Okay, here we are round three. Uh, I have a decent hand, certainly. I'm not going to mulligan it. I keep this. Hope I get another planes for the Sun Striker. Heal over the Pride is good. If I draw a fourth land, starting with three is great. Have the chance to get some early beatdowns with Avon Squire with Dark Favor on it. Or even Johnny Sun Striker with the Dark Favor and get some extra life as well. Play my land, pass turn. And I normally would play the Avon Squire, but, um, you know, actually I'm going to. I'm going to save the Ravenous Rats for when he has more cards in hand. At this point, uh, the discard is not as powerful as it would be if he has less cards in hand. Because he's not going to choose to discard a card that will help him really early. That would just be foolish. I'm going to play the Guardians of Krosa first instead of the Dark Favor, even though the Dark Favor would, um, would cause a lot of damage right now. Nevertheless, I want to develop my board position first. So I can have a wall sitting back while my Avon Square goes in and hopefully attacks him a lot and uh, hopefully he doesn't have a response for it. Like a murder or something like that. Are you going to murder or cast a creature? That's the question. I'm lucky I got that pet. Oh, wow. That's even better. You can just annihilate me right off the bat. Captain's Call. Great combo with Healer of the Pride. And this puts me in a tough situation. There's not much to play besides Ravenous Rats and Dark Favor. I can dark favor into him and kill him, or just attack into him and kill him. Trade for it, but he's got death touch, so that would kill me right out. But um, I'm left with very limited options at this point. He's a flyer, I don't want to get rid of him. You really don't want to get rid of him. But across the table, the only thing I've got to stop that guy is a pacifism. And if he's gonna feel trade, I'll certainly trade Avon Square for a Nighthawk. I've got life gain of my own. And I just as I figured, not willing to trade the Nighthawk. If I played the Dark Favor, he would probably use the Death Touch and kill it, realizing what a huge threat it is. Gonna play the Ravenous Rats now. Hopefully, there's nothing in his hand he wants to discard. A mountain. Maybe that'll stop him from playing burnt spells. Maybe he has a couple mountains. Alright, he's gotten a lot of Evolving Wild, so he's just gonna go grab a mountain instead. Or an island. Probably got sleep or something like that, I think. In fact, I think from watching his game, I know he has sleep. So it's going to be a race with him getting two back every turn. Uh, hopefully not buffing his guy. Okay, and see, this is the problem I've got. I really need to land and do planes because I can't play my Sun Striker. Can't play my Healer of the Pride, can't play my Captain's Call, and can't play my uh, Johnny Caller of the Pride because I'm uh, kind of screwed with um, 
screwed with mana. So I've got to play Dark Favor on Avon Square and watch it get murdered. Or I could play it on Ravenous Rats, which is what I'm going to do. It seems foolish at first, but I'd rather have the rats get murdered than the squire. The squire's got exalted. And fuck, that just destroys me. Yep. That ruins me. Three for one. That's, that's awful. I overextended. The only things I could cast. Gosh, I wish I had that of Johnny. I could have started giving a plus one, plus one counters. And that's going to give him another three for one. Drawing three lands for one card and some mana. And the planes that we were looking for. Healer of the Pride first, of course. Gonna use his Gem of Becoming, perhaps. By taking those three lands out of his library, he is dramatically increasing his chances of drawing spell cards every turn and making sure he never misses a land drop. I'm pretty much forced to find a pacifism, the only one in my deck to stop this Nighthawk. Nighthawks just win games. And uh, Gem of Becoming is underrated. If you're playing those uh, three colors, or two of them, and splashing for the extra for good spells, and you have an Evolving Wilds too like he does, you can use the power of all the best cards from three colors. Oh, it's my turn? Okay, that's confusing. Alright, so we'll start out with this. Gain some life. Get ourselves back up to 20. I'll attack with my healer. Hope she doesn't get killed. By I don't know what. I know he's got that one that does three damage that you can divide up as you please. Also, if I put a Johnny out, I've got nothing to protect it from the Vampire Nighthawk as well. Another rather frustrating problem. A Johnny Sunstriker with a Dark Favor has potential though. That could uh, possibly bring me back where I want to be. They're both practically at full life from the life gain we each have. Okay. Activated abilities can't be activated. I wonder if that includes passive abilities. I don't think that's an active ability. I could be wrong. And it's three uh, uh, planes. So. Don't really need the second ability. Although that could, dis that could surprise the Nighthawk. If I had. If the healer was still out. I would use that to surprise the Nighthawk and kill it. Well, it wouldn't be much of a surprise, really, but <laughs> obviously, because it would be dead. And I didn't mean to tap that extra mana. And, um, you know, shit, you know, I can't play a Johnny either this turn. Maybe I can create enough of a threat, though, that stops him from... Maybe I can create enough of a threat that he'll keep that character back to block.
I don't know why I haven't been attacking with these guys. Kind of an idiotic thing to do since he's been attacking me every turn. Especially before he played the Entrancer. I'm not on the top of my game right now, I can feel that. Usually I um, don't make these kind of mistakes with the board situation. Okay, and he's got destroy permanent gain control of creatures. Uh, this this just wrecks me completely. Huh. Gain control of my guy. I I don't have anything to counter that. Not attacking with his Nighthawk for some reason. Uh, he could feel free to destroy a Johnny as soon as I put it in. He probably wants to defend his his Nicole Blass. And I don't have much to say about it, so he'll be destroying a permanent and attacking me. Killing a swamp, okay. Classy. Attack with your Nighthawk and your Johnny Sunstrider. I don't have anything. You have wall fire, I can't attack you. Can't do anything. Maybe I should have guessed from the colors he was playing that he had Nicole Blast. I don't know. Great, I can at least kill. Encrust or Dark Favor? Which one? Well, he still does that. I'll get rid of the Dark Favor on my guy. There, now you're just a regular 2-2. Two -two. Uh, gain control of target creature. He could use that and then deal 7 damage. Oh, he's gonna... That's good. He's destroying all my lands. It's very classy. It's just gonna make the game last as long as possible when it's completely impossible for me to recover. Deal seven damage, that player discards seven cards and sacrifices seven permanents. So he's clearly uh, drawing this game out as long as possible to uh, Kind of like in League of Legends when one team has like 30 kills to 5 and uh, the weaker team won't surrender. You have like one or two people who are just trolling and then, and then that happens. Yay. If I buffed him first then... Then he could kill the Nighthawk, but it's pointless really anyhow. He can just kill my Johnny next turn in a number of ways. Johnny with one loyalty. And I have no blocker. Yes, good job. You got rid of him. Congratulations.
Well done, sir. Too bad I didn't have another exalted creature on the board, or I actually would have been able to kill Nicole Bless when I dropped the Johnny. I probably should have waited. Although he had the ability to kill seven of my permanents, so I really couldn't have I don't see myself coming back from this. But I can learn more about his deck, perhaps. Run down his clock, although mine is lower than his, so that's not realistic at all. And swamp. I'll just have him do this the hard way. Discarding my cards and killing every permanent I have will do the trick. As well milling me to find out every card in my library. Very classy. Not sure what I did wrong. Um I Guess I should have won the previous match so that I wouldn't have had to play this guy. That would have been uh, the ideal decision. I feel the deck is decently strong, pretty well tuned. Didn't really get the kind of draws I was looking for. And uh, the opponents were better equipped than what I usually see. Gain control of target creatures, quite good ability on Nicole Blast as well. Oh, and there's another game. What happened? Did I win the first one, or is this the first one against him? I don't even remember. What the hell's the matter with me? Uh, I don't even know what the side in that would be good against him. Maybe more rats. Duress? Duress could be good. Against this dude. Kills my guys, getting them back could be good. Did he use bad enchantments? Yes, he did. to cut why did I get that I didn't need too much land 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 all the land in the world let's see what my stat is such a low mana curve I need two mana what the hell what are my chances of drawing Two land, still wicked high. Three land, high enough. So here I am, playing 46 cards, 17 creatures, and 18 lands. Don't try this at home, children. Yes, I'd like to play first. Four lands in a deck like this? Hell yeah, I'll take it. Four lands in a 46 card deck with 16 or 17 lands. Well, that's most of my cards right there. And I've got two of each color, which means I can play. I can play everything in my deck with the 
I can play everything in my deck with the lands in my opening hand. That's pretty, pretty cool to me. Don't kill it. Okay. That's good. You's gonna die, boy. You's gonna die. You may have protection from uh, white, but you don't have protection from black. So long, bitch. Next turn, Knight of Glory is going to be on a growing plan. Assuming nothing murderous happens to him. Oh, but he's got prop black. He can still encrust it. But I've got a race this time. Which is better. Hmm. What to do? Hopefully he doesn't have some trick that I don't know about, but I don't think so. Now this is what the duck wants to do. Give me that prop black against murder. Unblockable man. 3-3. Three, three. For three, goes unblockable. Swamp. Not really what I needed. Knight of Glory has prop black. He's tapped out. Swarm bigger by the minute. And he's got vigilance. Now here's where you're gonna where I might lose you. I've got kind of an idea here. Well actually you know what? I was gonna put the Ring of Thune on the Guardians. Uh, just to um, give them a counter as well. And you know what? I'm going to keep the captain's call in hand because uh, I know he's got cower and fear and I don't want to lose all those guys at once. It's kind of better if I have the cat out there or something to chump block. There's no, no real purpose to it right now. Alright, there's something that I can't fight against. Can't block. He's got two unblockables. But it can block my Knight of Glory and kill it. Or can it? One, two, three. Prop black. Let's see, one, two, three. He's gonna be five. Or no. Six, five. The exalted effect. Uh, and he's probably black. Can't block him, so. I think it should be safe to attack. You jump block. Is he getting down there? You don't block, you're at. Two life. <laughs> Use your wall. Block with the Kraken. Why? Just block with the blue guy. That guy was unblockable to me. If you did manage to kill my Light of Glory with Burn Spell or something, then 
Well, whatever, he's probably given up. At four cards, there's less. It's likely there's something he doesn't want to discard. Unless it's an extra land. Scroll Thief. Not too helpful for him, but I don't know that he would have wanted to discard it. You see how Ring of Thune turned uh, my Knight of Glory uh, into a complete destroyer. All the rings are great bombs, especially if you get one heavy in your color. People need to pick them higher in any kind of stall. And the thing is, I can attack with him and have him have Vigilance. Then afterwards, move it to the Guardians of Acrosa so he'll get a token next turn and be one stronger if I need a better blocker. Then I can move it back onto the Knight, attack, and then move it back to the Guardian. So there's a lot more versatility than people give them credit for. Especially ones like the black one with regeneration for two mana, or um, the blue one with hexproof for two mana you can activate. Uh, being able to play those in any color it gives uh, some amazing possible advantages. This looks like a trap. One, two, three, four. Mana open. I don't know what he's going to do, but can't really afford to change my game plan at this point. Unless he can do 6 damage real fast somehow. Yeah, chump block time. And your Harbor Bandit, who's certainly not a bad card, is certainly worthy of getting a ring on him if you're black-blue. You can make him unblockable. A little more expensive than a Tormented Soul, but all in all, not a terrible card. Uh, okay. I'm just going to take it and die. Knight of Glory swinging for eight. Or what have you got? Oh, stay alive one more turn. Quite clever. I guess I should have anticipated that and attacked with multiple creatures, but yeah. And that's uh, what I mean by you can have one character attack and switch the ring off to give someone else a chance to... Uh... Actually, I meant to put that on the attended knight, but it's still an example. Because buffing a first strike guy is great. Oh, and he concedes. One one. Do I dare play the same deck again? Hmm. Got a good draw last time, but there's no guarantees I will again. I want, you know, I think the War Clamp Mastiff is going to do all right against him. I think the Divine Favor. Uh, I don't know. It's dicey. I wonder if he took his uh, enchantments out of his deck after seeing what I was doing. I'm drop a race. Still have a good chance of getting enough lands. Land light deck. Now he gets to be on the play. Again, perfect opening hand. Two white. Finally see my pacifism for the first time. The distant tomb. The dog I just put in gets to come out and play. I drop a second turn knight of glory, most likely. And swing with him for two.
And should uh, they decide to do something cruel like kill my knight of glory, I'll just make another one. Bring him back with Distant Tomb. Distant Tomb is not as good as a creature, but he lets you, if you have a creature who's worth more than one card, or who has card advantage kind of built in, then you can definitely um, do well to use him. Cower in fear is what I'm calling, or we're expecting, or murder, perhaps. Murder, no. No cower in fear, those three black. Oh well, maybe he's got nothing. It's just hard not to see it that way. I'm gonna keep the war priest of Thune back. Cause uh, wait to see if he has a destructive enchantment. Because destroying a mark of the vampire with that would be priceless. And I did take my race out, so I need to keep that, keep him available for those kind of duties. Love that duty bond did is a zero two. Lets him survive cower and fear. Very nice. Bark bark. War war clamp mastiff. I like to call him skull clamp mastiff. Cause that's what I would like to call him. Alright, let's see, what's his move now? Yep, cower and fear could have predicted that. And I've got nothing to buff him with. But that's okay, because I've got this hilarious ability to get my Knight of Glory right back. Boom. How hilarious is that? It'll be less hilarious if you drew multiple cowers in fear. It's often underrated and being uh, able to pick it quite late. Against a deck like mine or one with tokens or against green sometimes. Oh jeez, that fucking hurts. That's really bad. That's really bad. But, I will carry on. In the face of his killing multiple creatures with one card, he got a 3 for 1 and then a 2 for 1. He's cast 2 spells so far. He's controlling me horribly, trying to do the beat down, but my creatures are small and really susceptible to that kind of stuff. As much as I hate to do this to a stupid card like Scroll Thief. I'm going to have to pacifism him because I have no blocker. I can't have him drawing that many cards. It would be a surefire win for him. He already has a lot of card advantage for me to try to make up. I know he's packing murder in there somewhere. And think that he killed, uh, you know, these three creatures and my distant tomb with two spells. When they are good creatures, that's, that's just bad bad sign speaking of which can you believe that um, I have a regular amount of land like 16 or 17 in a 46 card deck and I've gotten 7 lands already on turn 7 that's statistically very improbable which I'll show afterwards He's probably going to have a kill spell for this. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I have to use it anyway. Why do I have to use it? Because I need to make my tormented soul bigger and badder. Still murderable. I really wish that I got one of the black rings. I would have picked it over anything if I saw it. Never got a chance to see it. 
I should have played War Priest Athuna as a blocker, but I don't think he has attackers right now. He doesn't, he's got two cards left in hand. I, I want to play my War Priest of Thune on the one hand, but on the other, I really can't because uh, if he got something like an Encrust that would stop my um, Tormented Soul from untapping, uh, or a Vampire Bite to start restoring his life, then I would really need to uh, do something about that. Well, here's one idea. He's got one card in hand. Let's see if it's a spell. And it's a swamp. Okay, so everything he's top decking as well. Everything we see is what he has. So that guy can't block. We're gonna have to get the War Priest of Thune out. Use it to protect a Johnny. No, no, I do not wish to use the ability and get rid of pacifism. That would have been terrible. Harbor Band is 3 3. We're going to make War Priest of Thune a 3 3. That way, if he tries to. Well, shit, I mean, he's unblockable. I guess I should have taken that into account, but if he doesn't use that, I could block him. I was one turn away from a Johnny and getting me 22 2 cats. Which would have been nice, but he's got to draw something, or else this little clock is doing its job, wearing him down every turn. If I didn't have pacifism for that scroll thief, though, things would have been looking real grim. And then I picked the Johnny up, and uh, despite his two for one and his three for one, with um. With Flames of the Firebrand and Cower and Fear. Alright, he's making it unblockable. Gonna hit a Johnny? Or me? Probably a Johnny, almost certainly. Yeah. Declare blockers can't be declared. And of course, I won't be able to use the ultimate ability for, uh, for a Johnny. But I can give my Tormented Soul Double Strike, which should win the game for me this turn. And he conceded. And I won two boosters for beating him. I would have won three and the tournament had I won the previous game, but I learned from my mistakes. Got two packs to try again. Uh, so if I can get one more pack and a couple tickets, I'll be going into my next game. Uh, this is Zode. Thank you for watching, and uh, good luck to yourselves.